In this video, you'll see some best practices for migrating servers to AWS using Cloud Endure migration. By looking at a few common scenarios, you'll learn how to better prepare your environment for the migration process, perform tests before initiating the cutover process, and avoid issues so you can migrate your workload successfully. To get started, let's sign in to the Cloud Endure user console. On the dashboard page, we can track the replication status of the source servers we plan to migrate. We can also see the number of installed machines and replicated disks, as well as license availability. Note that migration licenses last 90 days following the installation of the Cloud Endure agent to a source machine. The Machines page enables us to monitor the replication progress and status of the individual machines that have been staged for migration. Server 1 has made a small amount of progress in replicating data. Let's look at its details. In the Machine Dashboard pane, you can see that data replication is paused. Pausing is one of several actions you can take on an ongoing migration. A paused replication stops creating new snapshots while still monitoring and registering changes of the source machine, but does not transfer them to the replication server until the replication is resumed. Pausing replication is different from stopping it, which not only halts creation of new snapshots, but also deletes all previously created snapshots. For time and resource efficiency, if you intend to resume replication, it's best to pause. The server will resume data replication from its paused progress point. Server 2 has a progress message indicating that communication was lost with the source machine and shows that cutover was completed nine days ago. It is a best practice to immediately terminate and remove source machines from Cloud Endure after cutover has completed to avoid costs incurred from idle resources. Let's remove this server from the Cloud Endure console now. Server 2 is now removed from the list. Moving on, we can see that data replication for Server 3 has stopped, and its migration lifestyle status is not ready. The machine dashboard pane is empty because no data has been replicated yet. In the event of a non-intentional stoppage, first view the source specifications to ensure the server is properly equipped for replication. The Cloud Endure agent on this server has checked the prerequisites, but replication didn't start automatically. So, let's start the replication manually now. Server 4 is in the process of pairing the Cloud Endure agent with the replication server, but appears to be stuck on that step. Let's take a closer look. We can see the steps that have completed successfully. Authenticating the replication server with Cloud Endure Service Manager occurs over TCP port 443, while pairing the Cloud Endure agent with the replication server occurs over TCP port 1500. Based on where the process is stuck, the issue seems to be with TCP port 1500. As a best practice, ensure your firewalls aren't blocking traffic and that the replication server's connectivity settings are configured to allow traffic from the source machine. Server 5 has reached the desired status of continuous data replication and is ready for testing. It's a best practice to perform tests prior to cutover. By testing your migration configuration, you can verify that your source machines are working properly in the target environment. First, let's review the blueprint to ensure the target machine is configured how we want it. For instance, we can make sure that the security group associated with the source machine network is isolated from the source site to prevent potential network conflicts. Other blueprint variables can be set to fine-tune different properties of the target environment. Now let's launch the target machine in test mode. The migration lifecycle status for Server 5 now says Tested. Once a test has run successfully, it's a best practice to stop the target server to avoid replacing the resources on the target. Server 6 has already been tested, but we can see a progress bar frozen at 0% with a lag of 9 days. Hovering over the data replication progress bar, we can see that data is being rescanned, likely as a result of rebooting the source machine. After a cutover test has been performed, avoid rebooting the server before the final cutover. If problems are encountered, you'll need to repeat the entire data replication process. Likewise, make sure that auto-updates on source machines are turned off prior to the cutover to prevent rebooting.
we can see that the lag is 9 days, well over the upper limit of 48 hours. This may be due to inadequate configuration settings for the target environment or replication process. First, let's review the blueprint for this server. Next, let's look at the replication settings to see if we can speed up the replication process. We can use a dedicated replication server for this source machine. We can also enable network bandwidth throttling to minimize bandwidth congestion. Now we'll save the new settings and launch the machine for a test to ensure the replication time is within bounds. Let's review the job progress. As you can see, the launch test is in progress. When this or any test completes, the start and finish times can be used to plan downtime for your final cutover. You've just seen some best practices for migrating servers to AWS using Cloud Endure migration. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn to try.